right, this is the recording for CAC um, for 827 Thursday. Um, if you're in ACA, then click out of this video and you'll go find the ACA video. It's going to be a little bit different. Okay? So, CAC kids, if you're making that, go ahead and look at this warm up question, read through it, find your answer, pause if you need to, and then play when you're ready to go through it. Okay? So, going through the dot plot shows the number of children's books purchased by customers at two different bookstores. We're going to be comparing these two dot plots. It asks which statement is supported by the information in the dot plot. Okay, so hopefully you've already read through, um, and the answer is going to be H. The mean of the data for score one is greater than the mean for score two. Okay, I'm just going to show you how to calculate that one. Um, if you need help calculating the both range B in for each one, you can um, ask the teacher if you have a question about it. But let's go through the mean. So the mean means I'm going to add up all of the data points um, in the dot plot. Now be careful. So like, let's look at score one. If I'm finding the mean, each of these dots represents like one person saying that they bought that many books. But like, so if I'm looking at, if I were to list these out, it'd be zero, zero, and then one, 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 two, two, two. So each dot, you have to be careful. Um, like, don't just count this as three people, this isn't just, uh, you're counting the number of books, okay, not just the people who bought it, okay, so, um, looking at that, um, so there's going to be, this is going to be one, two, three books purchased, um, in that next column, it's going to be two, four, six, eight, ten, I'm calculating the mean, but I'm not going to list out all the numbers, because that would just take too much time. Three, six, nine for that one, four for this one, five, ten, fifteen, and twenty, and then twelve for that last one. Again, we're looking at the number of books purchased, so that's why we're counting each lot of whatever the column says. Okay, to continue to find the mean, we're going to add all those numbers up. It gives us a zero because they, no books were purchased in there. Okay, so three plus ten is thirteen. 13 plus 9 is going to give me 22, plus 4 is going to give me 26, plus 20, should be reading that, 46, plus 12 is going to give me 58. Okay, add and divide, I need to divide by the number of numbers. So we still count the zeros there, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 people were surveyed. So we're doing 58 divided by 20. Now again, in my head, I should already know, this isn't going to be a whole number. It's going to be a decimal or a fraction if we were to go that route. Okay? But we're looking to see, does 20 go into 5? No, it does not. But it does go into 58 two times to give me 40. Okay? And then we left with 18. And again, we don't really do remainders in junior high. We go to the decimals that we learned about fifth grade or so. Okay? So remember, 58 really has this decimal that goes on for, uh, it's invisible, but it's there. Um, and then we add a zero and bring it down. Okay? Now, 20 goes into 180. I like to imagine it 2 going into 18. It's going to go in 9 times. So 20 times 9 is going to give me exactly 180. Okay, so the mean for this one is 2.9. Okay, going down to the second problem. Again, we're looking at books purchased. So in this first column, four people bought no books. So no books were purchased in that situation. Um, number of people who bought one book, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six total books were purchased in that. Okay, next is two. So two, four, six, eight. Books were purchased there. Three, six books purchased. Four, five, ten, and then six. Add them all up. So zero plus six. Six plus eight is fourteen. Fourteen plus six is twenty. Twenty plus four is twenty-four. Twenty-four plus ten is thirty-four. And thirty-four plus six is going to give me forty. Okay. Divided by the number of people we surveyed. So again, we had four people 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 
22 people were surveyed. Okay? It does not go into four, but it does go into 40. A pretty whole number two per person. That was the average. The mean or the average was two votes per person. Okay, so um, it is true that the score one mean is 2.9 votes per person. The score zero is then two. Okay, moving on to today's lesson. Okay, that's just a review of stuff that you've been talking about. Today's lesson is history. So you'll need your ISN. Today's topic is going to be histogram. So if you need to go ahead and update your table of contents, today's date is 827. Our topic is histograms, and this is going to be page three, I believe. It might be four. I see if it works for the quizzes activity, but whatever page is next, go ahead and do that. Then you're going to go ahead and turn to this, whatever, again, whatever page you're on. You're going to go ahead and copy down what's at the top of my page into your ISN and pause to do that and play when you're ready. Okay, so I asked my, let's pretend I asked my first series how many books they read during the quarantine break. Okay, and I'm going to record the results down below. So, uh, book, number of books is ranged from 0 to 11 books that people read, and then I'm going to record how many people said that they read each. I had 8 people read nothing, that's fine. 4 people read 1 book, 1 person read 2, 1 person read 3, 2 people read 4, one person read five, no one read six, no one read seven, but I wanted to keep them there just for, you know, consistency. Three people read eight books, no one read nine books, one person read ten, and no one read eleven. So, I'm not going to keep eleven there, just the ten. Okay? And now we're going to turn this into a histogram. Now, a histogram looks a lot like a bar graph, but there's going to be one unique thing that's different that I'll point out when we do it. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, like a table on X and Y coordinate plane that we learned about, well, we've been using for a while. Okay, so I'm going to make it about that big, you know. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and title it because we always want to put a title with the bar graph of what we're talking about. I'm going to put, this is talking about Lytle's class reading. Okay, if you're not in my class, it's fine, you can still copy this one. You can replace your name with Ms. Ballard or come in on the sweat, whoever. It does not hurt my feelings. Okay? On our x axis, it's going to be the number of books or the number of books read, whatever you want to say. And then on our y axis, the number of people depended on how many books are reading. That number of people. Okay, that's the number of people who said that they read books. Okay? So here's the unique thing about um, a histogram. On the x-axis, we're going to do it in sets. We're not just going to do a bar for zero books, one book, two books, three books. That's, that's going to be a lot of bar. So what we do instead is we're going to chunk it. We're going to do it in intervals. Okay? So I'm going to pair zero and one books together, two and three, four and five, sort of to compact and compress things. Okay? So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to sort of make intervals on my x-axis. So this is going to be for zero through one book. Okay, let's summarize that group. Two to three, four to five, um, six to seven, eight to nine, and then we're going to go ten to eleven. So that's why I have that eleven is the sake of making all of the intervals equal. Now so each one is just grouping two sections together. So zero, one, two, three. They're all consistent intervals, and histograms are all equal. Okay, on the y, now on the y axis, I'm just going to keep it the same. Like, I'm just going to do off of one like you would normally. Okay, so I'm going to start at zero like always. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm going to have to sort of squeeze. I'm going to have to move my title. Ooh, we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. Okay, so if I'm making a bar for that first one for zero to one books, we have a total of 12 people read that. So I'm going to make my bar, okay? Um, zero to one needs to go all the way up to 12. So that's why I'm going to have to sort of extend your page. Okay, so this should be, it's going to make it sort of like a bar graph, uh, bar graph, but I'm going to go from one tick mark to the next. So I need to make sure it goes all the way to that tick mark. 
That's my first one. Two to three, I had two people um, in total read two to three books. So I'm going to start, and this is the other case, my cars are going to be touched. For two to three books, I had two people read that amount. Okay, for four to five, I had three people read. So I'm going to go from this start up to three, down to that next one. Six to seven, oh, I had no one. So there's, there's going to be nothing, but there's, there's going to be a space there. Okay, zero is going to be like down here. I don't need to make a mark yet. Um, for eight to nine, you had three people. So I'm going to start at the beginning of that interval, go over, bring it down, and then for 10 to 11, just one person. Okay, so that is a histogram. So things to notice about that. Okay, the key things about histograms, and you can copy this on to your histogram. Um, the first thing is that there's no spaces between bars. There's no spaces between bars. That's to show that it sort of covers every amount that else will be at. Okay? Then the other thing is this part right here. Okay? And this sort of makes sense. When it has no bar, that means there was no frequency. No bar, no frequency. That means no one answered that, or no one had that. So six to seven books, if you look up at that table where you recorded, no one read six or seven books. Okay? So important things. I'm going to jot down some important things down here. Hopefully you still have room. Um, this this audio class right is really big. So important things. Okay, so the first important thing to notice about histograms, um, it does look like a bar graph, but histograms are in set intervals. Intervals. Histograms have equal or set intervals. Okay. Um, the other thing is that the height of each bar shows Okay. So you might be asking why are those why are there those intervals in a histogram? Like what was the point of that? And the reason we do it is to summarize. Okay, so sometimes we don't if we have like really big data. If I surveyed the whole school and someone did like a hundred books and people did fifty and forty and read thirty, you know, I wouldn't want to make a bar for each one of those things. I would want to sort of group it together and summarize and say, oh, this many people read this range of books and this range. Okay. So histograms are really good for summarizing data, not really so much the specific data. Okay? So we're just going to practice some of that stuff. But first, let's go review. What do we notice about this? So we talked about shape distribution. We use words like peak, cluster, gap, and stuff like that. I want us to quickly make note. What shape or distribution do you notice about my histogram? Okay? So hopefully you'll notice that um, in six to seven, I would say that's a gap in my data. Okay, no one had that stuff, so there's a space, there's a gap. I would say there's a peak at zero to one. That was the most common thing. You might also say that the bows might be in there somewhere, and it is because we know the specific data. Um, and I would maybe say it's skewed because it's not symmetrical. It's not the same on the left and right. And because I have the majority of my stuff on the left, and it would sort of scale off to the right, it would be skewed right. Okay, so those are all things you could say that you notice about this. Okay, and now we're going to go to some practice problems. Um, again, if you're not feeling comfortable quite yet on your own to do these three problems, you can pause, you can go ahead and listen, but if you want to try them on your own, pause the video and pray. Okay, so I have this cost of different remote control airplanes, um, and we have these questions to go along with it. So number one says, interpret the histogram. How many rec remote control airplanes cost at least $100? So ask yourself, it costs at least $100. Can it equal $100? Yeah. 
Yeah, they can't. So I want to look a hundred dollars or more. So I'm going to see, oh, this is where a hundred dollars starts, and I'm going to go to all those claims. So in that first one, there's two two claims. There's no claims in this one, and then halfway between zero and two is one. So how many costs? A hundred dollars or more. Three airplanes. Number two, how many remote control airplanes cost less than seventy-five? So it can't equal seventy-five, but it has to cost less than it. And it's going to be like seventy-four ninety-nine and less. Okay. Ooh, yes. Perfect. So seventy-four ninety-nine and less. So in this first column, it looks like it's between eight and ten, so that's going to be nine. And then the next one is going to be seven. So total nine and seven, there's going to be sixteen airplanes. Number three, how many remote control airplanes cost between one point five and one seventy five? Okay, so between one twenty five. And 175 in that little set, there's only one airplane. And then last but not least, in what interval was the median of our data model? Ooh, that's sort of like a challenge question. Okay, let's break it down though. So if you're like, wait, I don't know the median, I don't know any of my physical things. Okay, but let's talk through that. The median again is talking about the middle. I don't know the cost of every single airplane in here, but let's see if we can sort of figure out where the middle would be. Okay, so let's first figure out how many total airplanes have been managed. So we had nine in that first column, seven, one, two, zero, one. We're going to add all those together. There's nine plus seven, that's going to be 16 airplanes. 17 airplanes plus two, that's going to be 19 and 20. I'm looking at a total of 20 airplanes. So the median is going to be at like 10. It could be between 10 and 11 airplanes. So if I like line them up, okay, you can sort of envision. I don't know the cost of each one, but there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, if I were to find the median of that, It would fall right between those two airplanes. Like if I were to lay them all out, it would fall between those two. Okay, so that's going to be between my 10th and my 11th airplane. Now, again, I don't know where that airplane is in the interval, but I do know how many is in each call. So if I was lining them up in order, these nine would come first, then the seven, the one, the two, and the one. Okay, and that would be the line of my airplanes and cost of greatest, so at least the greatest. So if it's in the 10th, it's between the 10th and the 11th airplane, both of those airplanes are going to be in the seventh column. So it's going to be in between the median. Um, I don't know the ex exact thing, but it says what interval would it fall between. It's going to fall in that second interval of $50 to $74.99. Okay, that's a bit of a weird question, but just know that you can sort of figure out sometimes where the median is. Okay, I don't know exactly where it falls in that interval, but it just might be. Okay, so you're going to go on and continue to do some practice on your own. Okay, again, if you can't see these, the class slides are uploaded on today, Thursday's module. You're going to answer these questions and then pause and then play when you're ready to check. And here are those answers. Okay. Again, pause to play with you, right? Um, tonight, there is no homework because it's a family night, but do be prepared. We're going to do an activity in class tomorrow um, that we're going to take as minor 1.2. Okay, what might be on that um, is mean, median, mode, and range. There might be dot plots, um, then a leaf plot, these histograms. It's not going to be anything too crazy, but some of that stuff might be on there. So have a good night and thank you.